Hello everyone and welcome! Today is the day we finally talk about the last member of the entire Shuriman story. So without further ado, let's talk about the curse of Amumu. Just like with Kindred, most people don't know where Amumu came from or if he's even real. The legends about him roaming the deserts of Shurima vary from city to city. But those who claim to have seen him describe Amumu as a small child wrapped in bandages, spreading death and disease with touch. One story talks about a young boy born into a ruling family of Shurima. This family was affected by a disease that corrupted flesh with hideous speed. The young boy was quarantined in his chambers in an attempt to save him from this corruption. It was there where he befriended a servant girl who heard his cries through the walls. Being his only link to the outside world, she told him stories about her grandmother's mystic powers. One morning, the girl told Amumu that the last of his brothers passed away, making him the emperor of Shurima. Saddened that he had to bear this news alone, the girl unlocked his door and ran inside to confront him face to face. Amumu threw his arm around her, but as they touched he fell back, realizing that he had condemned her to the same terrible fate as his family. Upon the girl's death, her grandmother placed a twisting blight on the young emperor, because in her mind, Amumu coldly murdered the girl. A second tale whispers of another crowned prince, this time one full of cruelty. In this telling, Amumu was crowned emperor of Shurima at a young age. And convinced that he was blessed by the sun, he forced everyone to worship him as a god. One day he learned about the Eye of Angor, an ancient relic buried in the sands said to grant eternal life to whoever looked upon it with unflinching heart. He hunted the treasure for years with a host of slaves who carried him through catacombs, sacrificing themselves to traps so the emperor could continue. Finally, Amumu found the giant doors containing the artifact. With brute force, the slaves broke into the chambers and Amumu rushed in, determined to look into the eye of Angor. His slaves used this chance and sealed the entrance behind him. Some say that the child emperor endured in the darkness for years, his loneliness driving him to insanity and causing him to claw at his own skin, which he was forced to wrap in bandages. His life was extended by the power of the eye as he thought about his past decisions. But the gift was double-edged sword, for he was cursed to remain forever alone. Another story of Amumu tells of the first and last Yorder ruler of Shurima, who believed in the goodness of the human heart. To prove his detractors wrong, he swore an oath to live as a beggar until he made one true friend. Though thousands walked by him, no one stopped to offer a helping hand. Eventually Amumu died of a broken heart, but his death was not the end. For some say he still roams the deserts, trying to restore his faith in humanity. These stories lead us to the one told recently by Khal Dun. He was an old storyteller, distracting children and adults from the harshness of Shurima's deserts. His story started with a young man entering a hidden tomb. The man had children to feed and wife to please, so his intentions inside there were obvious. He lit up a torch to reveal what hid in the darkness. The walls inside were smooth obsidian and carved with ancient images. He could not read, he was a simple man, but he studied the images nonetheless. He saw a boy prince sitting upon a sun disk with a smile on his face. Another picture showed the same prince walking among his servants, again with a smile as they bowed before him. Before one of those images was a small golden statue. It alone was worth more than the man could ever earn, so he took it without hesitation. He knew he had to go before more looters like him would arrive. But before he left, 
he looked upon one last image. It showed the boy prince dead. Those closest to him cried, but further back, people were celebrating. At this point, the man was confused. He wasn't sure if the boy prince was beloved or if he was a tyrant. Then, he heard a sound that made his skin crawl. He looked around, wide-eyed, holding his torch before him. Nothing. Who's there? He said. No one answered. It is just the wind, you fool, he thought. Nothing but the wind. Then he heard it again. A child was crying in the darkness further into the tomb. He wanted to run, but he didn't. The sobbing touched his heart. It was filled with such misery and grief. Torch held high, he crept forward. A white chamber opened before him, its floor black and highly reflective golden artifacts and jeweled walls within. His step spread a wave across the room as he entered. The floor was not made of reflective obsidian, it was covered in water. Kneeling, he scooped a handful of it to his lips. He spat it out immediately. It was a salt water, which was impossible in a land miles away from the nearest sea. He noticed the shadow of the boy sitting in the middle of the room, with his back to him. Are you lost? He asked as he stepped closer. How did you get here? The boy didn't turn. I... I don't remember, he said. I don't remember who I am. Be calm, child, said the man. All will be well. He stepped closer and the figure resolved itself before him. His eyes widened. The shape before him was just a carved onyx statue, nothing more. Then, a small dry hand grabbed him from behind. Khaldun smiled with golden teeth before continuing the story. The young man looked down, witnessing the tiny dead prince standing beside him, holding his hand. Will you be my friend? The boy asked. The young man lurched backward, breaking free from the child's grasp. The young man looked down at his arm in horror. His hand was shivering, turning black and withered. The wasting touch then began to climb up his arm. He turned and ran. In his shock and haste, he dropped his lantern. It hissed as it fell into the lake of tears, and darkness descended. With death creeping towards his heart, he ran up to the light until he felt the heat of the sun again. I'm sorry, echoed the voice behind him. I didn't mean to. And thus the tomb of Amumu was unearthed, Khaldun said. The listening children started arguing whether the story was or wasn't real until all of them went to sleep. All but one girl. Grandfather, she said. How did you lose your arm? Old Khaldun looked down at the empty sleeve pinned to his shoulder, then flashed a grin at the girl. Good night, little one. He said with a wink. And that is where all of Amumu's stories end. Despite the fact that we don't actually know anything about him, Amumu seems to be a cool character after all. I personally prefer the first story to be true, since it is the only one that could be linked to the most recent story told by Khaldun. But either way, there is a potential to bind Amumu to Azir, which in my book is awesome. So let's wait for another Shuriman update, since that is all of the Shuriman stories that I can cover. So, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, and if we reach 5 likes, I will stream more. Sounds like a bargain to me. You can always comment below and follow me on social media, especially on Twitter, since I started posting some graphical stuff there. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video, and Thank you come again. So, as you might have heard, I got a graphical tablet for my birthday, which by the way was on the 26th. I was streaming and thank you everyone for all the awesome wishes and stuff like that. I really 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 appreciate it. Anyway, I started painting and animating and boy is it actually difficult. I did not expect it to be as difficult as it is, if, you know, because I am not the worst at drawing, 
but doodles that I do in school are kind of different than the digital art. Anyway, I have to open the door because Eddie is scratching on it because I've been recording in here for an hour. So, see you in the next video!